So this is what I tell believers. Listen, if you're struggling with any of this, if you're struggling with walking out this in grace, you don't need to learn how to jump higher. You don't need to go learn some Greek and Hebrew because your problem is you don't know the scripture. You need to have a revelation how loved you are and the fullness of God's forgiveness. Because if you could really receive how forgiven you are, there wouldn't be any room for you to hold forgiveness away from anyone else. How could you not give forgiveness to other people when you realize how forgiven you are? Did you know that one of the last bastions of legalism in most of our hearts is unforgiveness? Did you know that unforgiveness is legalistic? Why? Because if someone has to, here's what we'll say, I would forgive them, but they haven't shown me that they're sorry. I would forgive them, but they haven't asked. I would forgive them, but they need to do this first. Everything you just said is an old covenant mentality. That would be like God saying to you, I would give you grace, but I would forgive you, but I would bless you, but, and if I got up here tonight and said to you, hey man, God wants to bless you, but you would know instantly this dude's forgotten the new covenant. Because you're, you're versed in the new covenant. God's not blessing me because I'm good. God's blessing me because Jesus is good. Right? No ifs, ands, or buts, man. I don't have to worry about whether or not God likes me or loves me. Because it's in Christ. It's not in my performance. So I can receive that as a free gift. And you can receive that as a free gift. And once you really receive it as a free gift, you'll never be able to put qualifiers on anybody else being forgiven in your life. I did not intend for this lesson to go here. <laughs> That's why I said, I meant what I said when we opened tonight to go, Father, we want to walk down a path that I'm not prepared to walk down. Let's walk down it. Let's just feel in the room. It's just feeling what the Holy Spirit is saying in someone's life. Or maybe someone who's going to watch that's just going to hit this exactly the moment in their life that they need it. But I truly believe it's for right here is to learn how to let go of the stuff, not because you've reached a higher consciousness or a higher plane, but because you finally received forgiveness for yourself. He has forgiven me for everything. He's holding nothing against me. How can I hold anything against you? How can I hold anything against my brother if I have a full revelation that the Father holds nothing against me? Because I know me. You know you, right? I don't need to know you. You see, I don't think you have to tell me all of your issues so that you can get over your issues. That's between you and the Lord. Now, I can offer you strength if you tell me your issues. I can also stab you in the back. It's why you have to be very careful about who you open your heart to, right? You don't have to worry about opening your heart to the Lord. He's not hanging it over your head the next time you fail. That's what people do. Next time you fail, the Lord doesn't come to you and go, see, I told you. I told you last time you went down to the altar that you weren't ready for this, but you asked me for the blessing anyway, and then you didn't live up to your end of the deal, and then you expect me to do something else for you? you what are you talking about? How, how dare you? No, thank God that's not how the Father treats us. So if all of this isn't being added, it's because I've forgotten that I'm forgiven. Now, what happens when I remember I'm forgiven? What happens when I come to a revelation? I got what I need. He's forgiven me. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent. Verse 10. The moment you know you're forgiven, it's easy to be more diligent to make your call and election sure. Sometimes we're taking those verses and go, here's what you, you people need to be more diligent. Peter said, be more diligent. No, Peter said you can be more diligent than the moment you know you're totally forgiven. If you don't know you're totally forgiven, forget it. Because if you don't know you're totally forgiven, you're not adding any of this stuff to your life anyway. The diligence doesn't come down to, I'm going to work harder. The diligence comes out of a man who knows he's forgiven. So diligence, this walking as if it matters, is the privilege of new covenant believers. Now this is what you have. You are new covenant believers. That means you are in a covenant between God and Jesus and you get the benefits. Jesus' blood was the sacrificial blood that brought you into the covenant. And the Bible says Jesus is not ashamed to call you brother. Which means in front of his father, he's calling you his brothers and his sisters. So you receive the fullness of his inheritance. Now, knowing that, I don't need a sermon. Neither do you. 
of someone yelling at me to walk worthy of my call. What are you going to say to me? I know I'm forgiven. I belong to him. He belongs to me. Are you kidding? Every step I take, I walk worthy. That's you. Every step you take, you walk worthy. So why does Paul say it? Because Paul is bringing emphasis. And I'm circling right back to where we were. Paul's bringing emphasis what I believe the church brought emphasis to. The highest honor in the world is faithfulness to who he is and living it out. And that's why they could hold their heads high and, and even lay their lives down on behalf of the gospel. Not so they could go to heaven, but because heaven had been deposited in them. And they were living up to that. They were walking worthy of that beautiful thing 